Hi, Tana Marshall here with your Feel Good Friday message. And today I want to talk to you about being vulnerable. I've been reading Brene Brown's book, Daring Greatly. And I saw her on Super Soul Sunday several times with Oprah. I love her because not only has she been studying vulnerability for many years and writing about it, but she herself has put herself out there in TED Talks, on TV, in her books, and really open herself up to being vulnerable. And it is not an easy thing. And I, I feel to a certain degree over my life, I've always had a certain level of vulnerability pretty high, because I, I don't think I was ever really good at trying to be somebody I wasn't. And I always thought of myself as being very secure with my insecurities. And uh, I, I try not to cover them up because I feel like, you know, somebody's going to find me out at some point. So I just try to be myself and be authentic. And, and especially in these videos, it's very important that I am genuine and authentic with you. Because if I'm not, you're going to sense it. And if I'm trying to be a certain way, it's not genuine. You're going to feel it and you're going to go click and you're going to turn it off. But hopefully you know I'm always coming from my heart and speaking my truth and and trying to help you and share with you what is true for me from the deepest part of myself and that requires a certain level of vulnerability sometimes and it can be very scary but it's so important so that people know who they're dealing with with you and I think it also helps other people maybe gives them permission a little bit to be vulnerable themselves and if you are putting on airs someone else is going to feel like they have to put on airs and then there's a competition and then nobody's being genuine and there's no authentic connection there so if you want to connect with other people really authentically you have to be vulnerable and it's very scary I understand and and I'll tell you one of the reasons I I have so much experience with this is because I was not attractive growing up. I was really heavy. I was the typical braces, glasses, acne, kind of ugly duckling. And for people who are like, you were never fat. I was like, yes, I was. That's me when I was nine. <laughs> me, little chubby nine-year-old. So I carry this around because people are like, you were never fat. I'm like, okay, here, here you go. So that was that was me and i had to just embrace myself and i know i focused more on who i was as a person because that's what i had to rely on i did not have looks to rely on at all and i remember in junior high in one of our classes they did this exercise where we all had a piece of paper with our name at the top and it had to be passed around the room and everybody had to write something positive around, about you and mine said good friend, good personality, nice person. <laughs> I have this friend Deanna who's gorgeous. She was gorgeous. She's still gorgeous. She looks exactly the same. Gorgeous, 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 beautiful. Hot. She's a fox. <laughs> so, but she was a really good person too. She was all of those things. You know, she was a good friend. She was sweet. She was nice. She was kind. Um, but she was hot and, uh, and I wasn't, and I was never, I, I never thought, Okay, I'm never going to have that. So I better be a good person and I better make friends based on who I am because that's all I have. And I did end up blossoming a bit in high school. My braces came off right before freshman year. My acne cleared up. And unfortunately, uh, right after my freshman year, that's when I got sick and I was diagnosed with lupus, which I have since cured. But during that summer, I was so fatigued and I lost my appetite, so I lost weight. I was tan because I was just outside in the sun and the sun made my joints feel better. Um, so I, I kind of had this, this moment where I was considered pretty for the first time and it was weird. <laughs> and I still sometimes don't feel feel that. I almost did this video without makeup just to really get into the vulnerability thing and I was like, no, <laughs> sorry, not going there. <laughs> but, but I still feel that. And I think anybody who grew up maybe unattractive or with some kind of hindrance to their confidence, 
is always going to have some little level of that inside. You know, if someone looks at me a little bit too long and I'm like, what? Am I fat? Do I have something in my teeth? Am I ugly? Do I not belong here? Do you, are you judging me? And I have to just let that go. And I have to think, okay, well, you know what? I don't know why somebody's looking at me or what they're thinking, but I just have to be okay with me right now. And it, it took a lot of vulnerability actually to start doing these videos because even though I've been doing them a couple of years, I had been thinking about it for a couple of years and I thought, I don't know who's going to see these and I don't know who might judge me for not only what I'm saying, um, what I'm putting out there, suggestions, advice, tips that I'm putting out there, but who might judge me for how I look. Um, you know, Brene Brown, when she uh, had these TED Talks go viral, I, I kind of couldn't believe this. In a way, I, I can, but she had a lot of people attacking her for superficial stuff, like her weight. And, you know, she's a beautiful woman. Beautiful. She's gorgeous. And she's normal size. She's healthy. And the fact that she was putting herself out there and sharing this information about vulnerability and making herself vulnerable. I don't know if it attracted other people who were equally vulnerable, but in a more insecure way and felt the need to lash out at her. Cause usually if you're lashing out at somebody else, it's because you do not feel good about yourself. I, I know that for a fact about me and I really try and pay attention to that because if we're feeling insecure, we're feeling not good enough, we're going to look for, things in other people that we can criticize whether within ourselves or unfortunately we might verbalize it to somebody else that will make us feel better that will that we feel is elevating us because it's lowering them and it really never does that it just it lowers you to an, another level where you really don't want to be so as scary as vulnerability is it can serve you over time, you know, because if, if I was afraid of that, I never would have started doing these videos. And it's it's been a really pleasant experience. And I, I enjoy it. And I hope that you enjoy it, too. So I just want to encourage you that if you are scared to be vulnerable and to put yourself out there and allow people to see you, not necessarily, you know, making videos and putting yourself out on YouTube, but just in your everyday life. Are you putting yourself out there as the real you? Are you feeling like you can be genuine and authentic? Or do you feel like you have to be a certain way to be accepted or to fit into a certain niche in life, whether it's socially or professionally? And think about if, if that's the case, do you really want to be there? Is that something that's really serving you as a person? Is it going to serve you in the long run? Or is it going to wear you down where you have to try so hard to be someone that you're not and put on this facade to protect yourself when no one can really see who you are anyway? And believe me, when you let go of that facade and you are yourself, you're going to attract the people who appreciate you and love you for the real person that you are and for the fact that you're being vulnerable. Uh, you know, I have so much compassion for people who are, are naturally vulnerable. And um, I hope this doesn't sound bad, but it's just, it's the thing that's coming to my mind. The, the thing that, that most prominently comes to my mind is when I see people who are, um, you know, who, who have some kind of physical issue and it, it's, ju it's just the way it is. It's something they have to live with. Um, you know, I, I see this, uh, when I see, um, you know, people with Down syndrome, they, they're vulnerable without even knowing they're being vulnerable, but they're so authentic and they're usually so loving and affectionate. And that just, it melts my heart when there are people who are just genuinely vulnerable. They don't even know any other way, but to just be themselves and I just I just want to hug those people and you know animals are like that I know it's it's not quite the same but animals are just they're who they are they they're vulnerable I mean they're gonna lash out if they feel threatened but the rest of the time they're just existing and they're just being themselves and 
they're usually so lovable. I mean, who doesn't love animals? I love my kitties. And anytime I see any kind of animal, I just love them. So think about people, animals, who are out there just living in a state of vulnerability all the time. And how does that make you feel? How do you respond to that? Does it scare you? Are you scared for them? Do you feel like, oh, you know, they're going to get attacked and they should really put up something to protect themselves because maybe you're projecting and maybe that's how you feel like oh no I've got to protect myself I can't let anybody see who I am I can't let anybody see that I'm insecure or that I'm not sure of what I'm doing or that I don't know those are three words that are really hard for a lot of people to say I don't know because that makes you really vulnerable but it's okay so I just want you to be okay with being vulnerable and if it's a scary thing, try it out here and there with, with people that you feel safe around. And just allow yourself to be yourself. And maybe talk to a trusted friend. And maybe there's something going on in your life that you haven't wanted to share because it's, it's too scary. It's really going to open you up and make you very vulnerable. But if you just choose one person that you feel safe with, That'll give you a little bit of practice and then you can learn how to be more and more open and vulnerable with more people on a regular basis and eventually you can be authentically yourself which is scary and vulnerable all the time most of the time all the time i don't know <laughs> but i i just I, I hope this message makes sense to you and I hope that it resonates with you on some level because we are all vulnerable, whether we want to admit it or not. It just, it's a fact. And the, th the thing is, how much of it are you allowing to be seen by others? So I'm allowing you to see my vulnerabilities. Um, you know, these, these videos are not scripted. I have notes that I follow. I just have an idea that I want to share with you. And I pretty much speak from my heart. And you know, sometimes you'll see me stumble over my words or forget what I want to say. Um, you know, the little blurbs at the end of the video. I just have to remember those. I don't, um, you know, I don't have anything or anyone prompting me. So I may, you know, forget what I want to say or do things out of order. But And that's me being vulnerable. And I just have to be okay with it because I'm trusting that you appreciate that and you know that I'm being real with you and that you will trust me and trust that whatever I'm sharing with you is always coming straight from my heart out of service for you, wanting to serve you, wanting to help you, and wanting to be here for you. So with that, <laughs> I hope you did enjoy this uh, video. I hope you enjoy all these videos, but especially this one. And if you did, please remember to subscribe to my channel on YouTube. And if this message would help somebody in your life, you think, I would so appreciate it if you would forward it on to them. And I want to remind you about the uh, Google Plus caregiver community. My friend Penny Petty and I uh, started. If you're a caregiver or know someone who is, who needs some support, some resources, whoops, a safe place to vent, we're here for you. Come on over and join us. And if you would like these videos delivered straight to your inbox every Friday, jump over to my website, Tana Marshall, and get on the mailing list. And I have little tidbits that I only share with my list there, so we'd love to have you. So with that, I just want to wish you a great weekend. Find an opportunity to be vulnerable. Try it on for size, see how it feels, and maybe do it a little bit more and more throughout your life. Um, you know, maybe a little bit every day, more and more, because being your authentic self is only going to create an amazing life. It might be scary, but it'll be worth it. So as Brene Brown talks about in Daring Greatly, be vulnerable and dare greatly and just trust that you're going to be okay because you are okay exactly as you are. I'm okay. I was okay then. <laughs> and I feel okay. Sometimes I still feel like this. So just know that no matter what's going on in your life, you're okay. It's okay to be authentically you and be vulnerable. It's safe. So have a great one and I'll see you next time.